everyone welcome to knitting noodles and in today's video we're going to learn how to fix some of the most common problems that you'll find as you're knitting now we're working on our purse project so insert the update of how mine looks here and i hope yours hopefully is farther because i haven't been able to spend that much time on it this week actually but as we're knitting the purse, we are probably gonna find some problems. And as you get longer and longer, it's gonna be way more painful if you make a mistake later on, if you have to unravel the whole thing. So I'm gonna show you how to fix some of the most common mistakes, which are a drop stitch and a picked up stitch and how you can easily fix those without unraveling the entire thing so let's get into it okay so for fixing a dropped stitch which is basically when a stitch from your needle falls off and unravels somewhat you literally drop a stitch now what you need to fix that you can technically do it without a crochet hook but a crochet hook makes it super duper easy so I'm going to show you first with the crochet hook, and then I can show you how to do it with just the knitting needles in case you don't have one of these. All right, so for picking up a drop stitch, first what I have to do is drop a stitch. So we're going to take that off the needle and taking it off and not getting it on the other needle is called dropping a stitch because you literally drop it. Now, if nothing happens, it'll look like this. Some people will keep knitting. For that, you would have to unravel to where that last loop is. If you catch it while it's like that, that would be perfect. You just slip it back on. However, usually you'll see this happen where it'll unravel a bit and you can see the loop all the way down here. Now I'm gonna show you how to fix it with the crochet hook. So as you can see, this stopped on a row of bumps. So they're bumps and smooth parts for garter stitch, which is all knit. So for this, since it last was on a purl or a bump, you can see, actually it's more on the smooth part. So the next stitch is going to be, we have to either flip the piece, flipping the piece would probably be easier, or you bring the next uh, rung of the ladder, as I've heard it's been called, to the front. Oh. I think I lost the loop. Nope, I got it. All right, let's flip this back around. Make sure we catch that loop. And put our crochet hook through it, like so. And we're gonna take that next rung of the ladder. We're going to twist it and come up. Now we are actually going to flip over back to the other side the easier way to do it otherwise you have to constantly go front and back so you would go back and then you take it out all the way and go from the front just flipping it back and forth is a little bit easier so now we're gonna take the next one we're gonna pull it through and make sure it twists slightly otherwise it'll have a slight gap in it you can kind of see for that one down there I didn't twist so I'm actually going to take it apart so I can redo that one and actually twist it. So flip that back over. Otherwise you'll have a hole in your piece. So make sure that it's twisted like so. I'm going to bring this back around, make sure it stays twisted. I have to bring these loops to the back of it. All right, so it's twisted. There's no gap now. Pull the next one through and we twist and turn and now there's that one last ladder rung I'm gonna pull it through and we're going to twist and twist it onto the needle now look at that if you look at what we just did you can't even tell that we just dropped a stitch and I'll show you 
by knitting it like the others. So we knit this, we knit the next one. And look how perfectly it blends in. You can barely even tell that anything happened. No one will ever know that you made a mistake. Now the other way to do it is with your knitting needle if you don't have a crochet hook. So you might have to use your fingers as well. It's the same concept. So you see, we stopped at a knit row, which means this has to come up front. Or you flip the whole thing around and this back stitch would have to come up and over. Goes onto the needle, off frame. All right, so let me put it back on. I don't know if I caught it on there. So you see the stitch, we just put it through. We're gonna rotate it, put it onto the needle. We're gonna take that next loop, also put it onto the needle and take that stitch either with your other needle or your finger and bring it up and over. Now you can see here, there's a gap. We don't want that gap. Bring the stitch behind. Let's twist our work around and the same thing we want to rotate it or twist it a little bit. This next stitch on top, two stitches on the needle, either with the other needle or with your finger, pull that front stitch over. Now, if you turn here, you'll see this needle is where our last stitch was. So let's transfer this back over here and we can knit this one that we just picked up. And if you look, you can barely even tell that we slipped up and we dropped the stitch. Look at that, it's almost completely clean. Right here, there's a bit of a hole. If we wanted to fix that, we could go back and redo it, but honestly, it's not too bad, so I think I'll just leave it. I have some more just naturally through it. So I'm not that worried about that. If it really bothers you, you could take it apart and fix that. You would just have to twist it a little bit. So we missed a twist in there. And then just continue and make sure that you have the same number of stitches on your needle. So for this particular pattern, drop the yarn. Keep going till the end. And for this particular pattern, I am supposed to have 37 stitches on my needle. So let's double check my finish and make sure that I have 37. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. I have 38 stitches, so something went wrong here. I somehow must have picked up a stitch, which I actually marked right here. Now, picking up a stitch is when you accidentally make an extra stitch than there is. So you can see right here, now there are two little uh, V's coming out of one stitch. So I made an increase somewhere. You can see here, either, there are two options that you could do. Either when we get to that same spot, you can unravel it down to where that increase happened. Now the downside with that is there will be a gap in your piece because you unraveled it and you're just unraveling it to get rid of that extra piece. That is probably not the best idea. So that leaves two other options. You can either unravel it down to where that increase happened, or you can make a decrease to bring it back down to the right number of stitches. So a decrease, the simplest way to do that, is to knit two stitches together. Now, this does come with some downsides. 
with an increase, it'll bring the edges of your piece and make them somewhat circular on the edges. Because you increased one in the middle, it'll make it bow outward. Now for a decrease, it'll do the opposite and it'll bring the inside, the middle, inward. So there will be a little bit of a bulge where the increase happened. Now to combat this, I would suggest if you don't want to unravel down to where the increase happened and repeat what you did, you should make a decrease somewhere in the middle. Now if it happened on the edges, it is going to be way more noticeable. If an increase or decrease happens in the middle, the edges are only slightly going to show what happened. If it happens towards the edge, it's going to be much more clear. So whether the, whether the increase happened towards the edge and you can clearly see it, you still want to make the decrease towards the middle, otherwise you'll have a really, it'll look like this on the edge. And you don't want it to look like that, you just want a slight, a slight fix to where it was before. So for that, since it happened for me somewhere in the middle, around this area, let me knit towards the middle. And I'd say about here is totally fine, far enough away from the edge. So for knitting two together, you normally go into one stitch and then you'd knit that. For knit two together, you do the same thing, just you treat two stitches as one stitch. So the same thing with one stitch, but you're gonna go two stitches, you're gonna go through those loops, through the back, and you're just gonna knit those two as if they were one stitch. And like that, we fixed the increase that happened. Very, very simple. And let me finish this row, and you'll see that the visual of what happened is barely even noticeable on the edges. Now this is very useful to use, especially if you made the increase towards the beginning of the project and you didn't catch it until right then. The easiest way is if you count every row that you do, you can catch it right as soon as it happens. And then you just have to unravel the row, which I'll show you a very easy way to do it because it's very easy to drop stitches if you just take all of the stitches off the needle. So let's go to the end of this. And you can kind of tell on the edges. See how there's a little bit of a bulge here and now it's gone back to normal. That's the sign that something happened that was a mistake in the row, but it is so slight that you could barely notice. And with the decrease, it brings it right back to what it was before that little bulge. And especially with a project like the purse, we're going to be sewing up the side seams. So you're not going to be even able to notice that little bulge at all. So that's a quick, easy way to do that. So what happens if you count? You count every row, and this row you counted, and now there's 38. You made an increase somewhere in that row. What you're gonna do is instead of knitting, you're going to take your other needle and you're going to scoop into the loop behind. So you see the loop on the needle, it goes through another loop down behind. So instead of knitting, you're gonna go from the back to the front and catch that loop, take that through and it'll just unravel through there. And you're left with the stitch on your needle. Now this is great if you made a mistake, say a few stitches back or even on that row. It is still tedious as fixing all mistakes are. However, it is way better than say, if I took a bunch of stitches off at one time, because then you could already see with that one, 
it's starting to become a drop stitch and run a lot lower than I wanted it to. These I caught just in time, but it's very easy if you do multiple ones that you're pulling, you're tugging it, the stitch will most likely fall down and be a drop stitch and you can have multiple at the same time. So keeping it on the needle and unraveling it like this and backtracking to your mistake is the easiest way to fix the problem. Now, let's say you found the mistake, but you don't know what happened. So you're going back and let's say you had picked up a stitch. So picking up a stitch usually will look like this on the needle. You'll see a little hole through it. This has no loop going through it underneath. There's nothing attached to it. If you take it off, it looks like a ladder rung, but if you pull it, there's nothing that comes with it. That means that you picked up this loop by accident as you were knitting. And so once you come back to that stitch, you can just drop it, you found your mistake, and you can keep knitting. The same thing if you're backtracking, you found a drop stitch. And if you backtrack that row, you find the missing gap where it was supposed to be. So these are some simple techniques that I have learned over time for how to fix mistakes without taking my entire work apart. And now sometimes the cold hard truth, like for this piece, I don't have enough yarn to finish it. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you <laughs> what a lot of my mistakes look like. Because sometimes, usually my mistakes are some things that cannot be fixed as easily. And I just have to embrace the cold hard truth of it and take the whole thing apart. I'll see you guys in the next video and I'll show you how to finish our purse.